Thank you for joining us today. My name is Alice Cruz, and joining me today are a group of Kirkwood students who were lucky enough to attend the Kirkwood Winter Study Abroad trip to Guatemala. This trip took place from January 3rd through the 17th. Uh, the students primarily stayed in Antigua, Guatemala, but were able to explore various areas uh, surrounding that city. The trip was primarily humanities focused and the students were able to build a house for an underprivileged family, but were also able to partake in several fun activities. I was actually one of the students who was lucky enough to attend this trip. And also joining me today are Lauren Cooling, Luana Bedell, Izzy Forbes, and Whitney Van Campen. Like I said, my name's Alice Cruz and I am a liberal arts student here at Kirkwood. <coughs> My name is Lauren Cooling, and I am a senior dental hygiene student. I'm Luana Bedell, and I'm a, a pre-vet student at Kirkwood. I'm Isabel Forbes, and I am a liberal arts student at Kirkwood. I'm Whitney Van Campen, and I'm also a senior dental hygiene student. So just to try and get to know our group a little bit better, if you guys want to talk a little bit about your previous travel experience and what made you want to go on this study abroad trip. Lauren, we can start with you. I knew I wanted to do another study abroad trip after I had taken a mission trip in 2017 to Haiti. We did a quick medical mission for just five days and it was life changing. Being in the dental hygiene program, I knew I wanted to do another medical or dental mission, um, but this Antigua trip was pretty close to that and just a great opportunity through Kirkwood to go with um, a classmate of mine, a faculty of mine, and then... Um, some awesome girls that I met along the way. Um, I was unsure at first, but um, be I wanted to, I decided to go just because my mom went on a study abroad program when she was my age and had a bunch of other people telling me who also went in my family to just, just do it. <laughs> so, and I, you had traveled previously before, right? Yeah. I've been to Brazil before because my mom's from Brazil, so half my family lives there, so I visit them a lot. Yeah, so um, I absolutely knew that I wanted to travel too as well. I've only ever been out of the country once before, and like Luana, I went to Brazil as well. Um, I've been to various places around the United States, but I knew that I wanted to travel abroad. I have such an itch for it, and especially to a country in which I had already learned the language. So Spanish was really amazing, and especially being able to integrate myself into the culture and learn various slang and sayings and phrases that would just help me be more at home while I was there. It was such an incredible experience and I would absolutely do it again. So I've always wanted to go out of the country. Um, I've never really known where so when this opportunity came up and um, one of my schoolmates was going and then our faculty was going that really pushed me to go as well. The most traveling I've ever done in my life is taking a two-week road trip to California and seeing like the Grand Canyon and Alcatraz and stuff like that. So um, I was just really excited to get out of the country and see something new. And as for myself, I am someone who has been lucky enough to travel quite a bit in the past, but I'd never really been to any place that was really out of my comfort zone, nowhere that was really culturally unfamiliar, nowhere where I was expected to speak a different language. So this was just a whole different ball game. But I love language. I love learning about different parts of the world. So I was really, really excited. So as I said, this trip was primarily humanities focused. So we're just gonna start by showing some pictures of the build site that we worked on. We actually were split into two different groups, a blue team and a yellow team. The blue team consisted of myself, Lauren and Luana, and the yellow team was Izzy and Whitney. Which was better. <laughs> <laughs> Debatable. <Sure. laughs> but um, we're going to show some pictures from our build site. Okay, the first picture I have was from the second day of our build site, and this was the day we painted the outside of the house, which was super fun. Mm -hmm. Um, not that we really did much painting. All the <laughs> kids that were in the neighborhood and the family that we were building for, um, all the kids wanted to help out, so they pretty much painted all of um, the walls and stuff for the house, which was a blast, and wanted to paint each other. We're painting everyone's face. Uh, the blue team, we painted their house blue, 
Um, so it was a really pretty color, and the kiddos just wanted to slap paint on everyone's face, <laughs> everyone's clothes. So we left covered in um, except blue Lester's handprints. abuela. Yes, except, um, <laughs> Lester's grandma. Exactly. She was off limits. And um, at the end of the day. We were getting everything cleaned up, and this picture just shows, like, we were taking wipes and water to all the kids and getting the paint off of their skin and everything, and they, in turn, did the same thing for us. It was just a really, like, humbling moment. I don't know. They were just so happy to do the simplest things and help out with their new house, so right. very, very special. One thing I also loved about painting with the kids is I think it's, like, the first time that they really came out of their shell. I agree. I feel like prior to that day, like you remember the first day when we saw Lester, he was kind of like being shy and watching us from afar. He was interested, but we were still kind of scary. Um, and then when we started with the painting and we really got them involved, you could just see how excited they were and they began really talking to us in our broken Spanish. <laughs> right, it was a good way to like break right. the language barrier and mm -hmm. just have some fun that day for sure. Right, right. And they're just, they are, like you said, really, really sweet. And I love how they, they insisted on helping us get the paint washed off of our face. I remember, Luana, you were also experiencing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had some under my neck, and they're like, Azul, Azul. I'm like, yeah, what, yeah. What, what's blue? I don't understand. I'm like, oh, <laughs> my neck is. Okay. Yeah. So what picture do you have from the experience? Right. Well, mine's from the third day, and it's when, like, all the kids really wanted to play because we weren't really doing much um, building just because of how te technical the, the things that they were doing that day. Um, they were doing electrical and uh, the roofing. We but, got to see how amazing our builders were. Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. But mine was just Aww. um Karen around. I think that's Dulce. That's Dulce. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's mm -hmm. what I thought. Um, one of the twins, and she, well, all the kids were just asking me to carry them on my shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> New word, make out of God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all day, every day. All day. <laughs> I will say um, another fun fact about Guatemala, we were really, really tall. Um, so all the kids, kids like being carried anyway, but one of our faculty members was, how tall is Nick? Six, six, two, yeah, six, three. Six, he was three. a superhero in Guatemala, <laughs> and all the kids loved going for rides on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. So now moving over to the yellow team, Izzy, what do you have to show? Okay, so <clears throat> the picture that I have to show is from the fourth build day, and it was directly after one of the little girl, or the little girl who was on our team, um, or on our oh, build team family, she painted all of our faces yellow, or as we were not, um, let's see, what's the word? We were not alone in our little painting, as these guys also got absolutely painted all over. But we also got little um, warrior marks right on our cheeks from the build, and especially the yellow paint that was used to paint the house. But um, on that day, Whitney and I accidentally started twinning. We wore the same shirt, same scrubs. And like these guys, by the end of the fourth day, we were really not doing much, and so what we did was we really were able to bond with the kids, and especially Jose, who was the youngest, and Cristal, who was the middle child. We were able to play various games of catch, which included like 11 to 12 different little small blocks that were left over, and she was just throwing them all over the place. It was chaos, but it was so much fun. <laughs> did you guys also experience like the kids wanting to help out? Absolutely, we oh, did. Oh, yeah. Crystal was there the whole time. Anything we did, she was doing. She was a rock star for sure. She was definitely a trooper, and she was actually doing it completely barehanded. Um, most of the stuff that we were doing was real, real grunt work. I mean, we were mixing cement by hand. We were shoveling it down into, like, the cracks on the build, and she was doing it without any gloves. It was truly remarkable watching her. And she was how old? She was 12. Wow. They really are like the hardest workers down there. Like the two guys that were on both the build teams are just unreal. Like they just work their butts off day in and day out. Just don't act tired. Don't complain about anything. And it shows that like that's what they teach their young kids too is like right. they all just work so, so hard. No, they were amazing. And I loved especially how much the family wanted to help as well. Obviously the kids wanted to because it's like fun. It's new for the kids. Our little boy that we were building for, Lester, wanted to help with everything but even Lester's dad like when he was not at work he was helping us mm -hmm. 
it's truly a very violently humbling experience, especially going down to a third world country where these guys really know what it, the value is in hard work. And it motivated me to be a harder worker because I wanted to pull my own load. And it was it was definitely very challenging at times. <laughs> Izzy, you did amazing. You were 100% all the time you were like watch me run up this hill with a wheelbarrow <laughs> i was there for you know support the whole time oh the wheelbarrow <laughs> the one that we had to pull up we had a wheelbarrow that was it was not a fancy wheelbarrow it had some cracks in the sides but in order to transport our dirt and sand from down below up to where we had to mix the cement we had a long rope in the front mm -hmm. and we had somebody on the back who was pushing and the other one was pulling and we'd have to take this running start. We had an intern on our side. His name was James. Um, he was from Drake and oh, thank he God would, for James. Yep, he <laughs> was truly a trooper and we would take running starts and just go piling up the hill with these massive buckets full of just sand. It was definitely exhausting. It's a lot of work. <laughs> I would like to point out that both of our work sites had uphill elements yeah Whitney I don't know that. uphill elements you want to talk about uphill ours was a trek to get to our house <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, saw yours. Walking I saw yours I didn't I didn't envy you <laughs> no mine was horrible and another thing with that is we had learned later on that the family are the ones who actually toted all that rock and all wow. that cement and all you know ever all the building materials all the cinder blocks all the cinder blocks yeah. up that hill and that hill was not an easy hill to climb I'm just saying so I'm it was literally on the side of a mountain. It was quite difficult. They were amazing, honestly. Mm -hmm. But, okay, so my picture is just us hand-mixing cement because it's something I will never <laughs> forget is hand-mixing cement all day, the blisters every day, on the blisters. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of work. And, I mean, just to see the, um, the actual builders come in and they would be like, get out of the way, get out of the way, we'll do it. And they'll just start it. You know, they were rock stars, too, because... I could never mix cement the way they were mixing cement. Literal amazing. rock stars. Yeah. By hand the whole time, too. Yeah. Concrete right. mixers were not a thing. No. Like, the hardest work we've ever done. Right. I think I can speak for all of us when I say that. <laughs> yeah, but like absolutely, most, you yeah. can. <laughs> absolutely the most rewarding. Like, no doubt. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Right. So just... To be completely honest, were you guys like looking forward to the building? Like, did you did you think that the building was going to be something you were going to be like really excited about? No, <laughs> no. At first, I, I would agree. <laughs> yeah, you were I was nervous? nervous. Yeah, that I wasn't be going to be able to keep up. But, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, I was nervous. I, I was just going to be sitting on the side, like I I can't do anything. Right, right, yeah. right. No, we all we all worked. I mean, they super. taught you how to do it too, oh, yeah. though. They right. Step by step, they're like, here's how you make U-box out of cinder blocks. Here's right. how you put cement into the cracks. Here's how mm -hmm. you do this. Here's how you do that. And you're, right. it just made it so much easier that they were so kind and friendly and willing to help us <laughs> so help nice. them. And, right. you know, I thought that me not speaking the same language, that learning how to do all of that would be difficult. But them showing us and then just the small words you pick up, too, mm -hmm. with how many times they repeat it, them pointing at things. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I remember yeah. being at a restaurant one day and Laura and I were practicing the directions in Spanish. <laughs> yes. Like, a la derecha, a la izquierda, so that we would be more helpful. Yeah, but you pick up a lot more yeah. than you think. Yeah, mm -hmm. I learned Absolutely. so many new words. And, and my Spanish wasn't like, I wasn't starting from square one, but <laughs> I feel like I just learned so much even just from, from utilizing it. Honestly, I think you could start from square one and do totally fine. Honestly, yeah. yeah. That no. was me. Yeah. I don't know yeah. nothing. And how do you feel like you did with the, with the language barrier? Uh, I mean, I relied, I'm not going to lie to you, I relied on Luana <laughs> and I relied on Lauren because <laughs> my Spanish is not not up to par with all theirs so you did great though like you you tried and you like yeah. put yourself oh, out I tried there but it was good it right. was good and from what I heard like the kids on the site still loved you and still like appreciated that you were oh yeah putting an effort with them I was so happy when we got Jose to play with us honestly. oh yeah <laughs> that kid was so shy I wasn't sure if he was gonna open up but we cracked him man so you guys all do you feel like you were able to like participate in the building? Absolutely. Oh, yes. There was a job for everybody. Even if you couldn't be carrying the wheelbarrows or the, carrying the cement bags, you could be doing something. Right. And God bless cool. our interns for carrying the cement <laughs> bags. Oh, oh, God. God. Bless Thank them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So while we are so, so grateful. Oh, I actually have a picture. Wait. Okay. So the picture that I brought is actually of our completed house. You can see the panel that we put in. We get these little 
plaques that have the name of the family and I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. So it's got the Imagine Guatemala logo, which is the program that we work through. And then it's also got our Kirkwood logo. And the number is the number of, of houses that they had completed. So we were house number 177, the yellow team completed house number 178. So they've been going at it a while. It's still fairly new, but they've been going at it a while. And then there's little Lester looking so happy with his Casa Nueva. Um, it was just, it was such a lovely day, that last day, being able to hand over the keys. I know Lauren was the one who was able to physically, like, take part in that ceremony and hand the keys over. How did that feel? Yeah, that was amazing. To see, like, all of our hard work um, show up and get to eat lunch with the oh, family and with the builders in their new house um, on the last build day was so cool. And then just getting to hand them the keys to an actual door, like, Something that we take so for granted here is that we have a door that we can lock at night and right. just feel safe and feel comfortable and that they were going to have that now too was super, super special. So, I also loved when we were able to give them some of the donated items, mm -hmm. how excited Lester got over his new pair of shoes. Right. That really, really warmed my heart. Mm -hmm. Just, I feel like even if you are someone who like grew up like poor or underprivileged in the U.S., it's just not the same thing. No. They don't have the same resources, and it just kind of blows your mind to see the conditions that these people live in. But they're not like they're not super depressed. They're not like like pitying themselves. Like they're they're working hard. They're doing well with what they have, and they're happy. They like are those happy. They were happy little kids. Right. They didn't have a lot, but they were they had each other. They have each other, and they have like the love of their family, and even just the small opportunities that they do have to go to school. Like. Right. They're just so appreciative of every little thing that they do have. Right. And they were such good people. Mm -hmm. It felt, like, so good to – I mean, obviously, we wanted to help them out regardless of, like, how they were. But just knowing how, like, genuinely good these people are mm -hmm. just felt so wonderful to be able to help them out. Right. Family is a big thing down there in Guatemala. Like, they are so friendly. They um, will always – take you in and they'll always just be so kind and friendly and warm warming um that is something huge that i noticed down there and even though we had known that family for what four days it was hard to leave i right. was not expecting like the building to be my favorite part of the entire trip i know but it absolutely was i was like tear, tears were shed i saw izzy end. cry for the yeah. first time in my life <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely a surreal experience. Right. I really felt feel like they welcomed us in. Mm -hmm. And in four days, yeah. how close you can become in four days, even with a language barrier, like that's just, that's amazing. Right. So I'm going to move on to some of the other activities we were able to take part in in Guatemala. Um, I'd like to start with Lauren. What do you have as one of your favorite activities that we were able to do? One of my favorite activities, surprisingly, was on the first day when we got there, which we were all, I think, still pretty exhausted. We had a long morning walking around the whole city of Antigua, taking a hike, um, went back, had dinner, and then we went to one of the guy who runs the program, Imagine Guatemala, Eddie. We went to his family's house, and they taught us how they make their money, how they make a living in Guatemala, which is by weaving textiles um, a m mine clothes that they sell, which was amazing, and actually got to sit down and like learn how they do it and the intricate detail. It's tough. Was amazing. Yep. I actually have one of the bracelets on right now. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. Oh, this yeah. is one of the nice. ones Eddie's family made. Yeah, they the clothes that they made, the journals that we bought from them, like mm -hmm. getting to support their family and like their um, business, as you might call it, um, was really cool. And then we got to make homemade tortillas. So Eddie's hmm. sisters and Eddie's wife and his kids and nieces and nephews and stuff were all there. And just getting to do that together was super cool and just be, like, super immersed in the culture. And they again, have tortilla the making barrier. down to an art form. They do. Absolutely. And they <laughs> amazing. Like, no restaurant or place that we went to could touch the tortillas that we made at Eddie's. No, I bought a bag of tortillas literally last week and I was so excited to eat them and they're <laughs> so gross. They're, they're so, so bad. Disgusting. They're so bad. There's nothing like a homemade tortilla like right off the griddle right at their house mm -hmm. and with the view overlooking oh, like we've been spoiled. The mountains, we were spoiled. yeah, and the volcano and 
just again with the language barrier but still getting to interact with Eddie's family and Eddie's niece especially was trying to help me out making the tortillas and stuff she, and his she was niece, a pro. She, she so was a cute. boss at making those right. tortillas she was what maybe like six and she was yeah. She was. A she pro. had it down, she and then here's me being like a full grown adult who can barely keep <laughs> right. the cornmeal together. It looks hey, easy, well, but it is not. I'm just gonna say all my tortillas came out perfect. <laughs> yeah, right. okay. Just saying. <laughs> but yeah, that was my favorite night. Just getting to kind of um, know his family, and then every time we saw Eddie going out to dinner and stuff, I would always say like, "Oh, how's how's your family? How's everyone? Make sure to tell them hi." Like we were so appreciative that they welcomed us into their home taught us how to make tortillas, showed us their um, lifestyle and stuff like that. Right. Well, my day was also <laughs> the same day as yours, the, oh, like our first day really there. Mm -hmm. um, and it was when we went to the, like, the Mercado? supermarket. Yeah, the Mercado. Yeah. Um, and just to get to see how, how their stores are like, where everything is just out and um, you can see everyone walking through very tight, close together. It was just really interesting to see all of that. <laughs> right. I remember when we went back to the market with Eddie to buy groceries for the family. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a pro. He knows his way around the market. He knows which stalls to go to. And it's a huge area. It's, it's kind of like a maze. Oh, it's, my yeah. gosh. I would have gotten lost there in five seconds I if I had been lost. by myself. <laughs> did yeah. you yes, I did. But I, like, saw you guys. I was like, oh, they went that oh, way. Oh, my goodness. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Did anyone else in the very first market we ever went to just, like, feel claustrophobic and scared? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what I'm talking yeah. about. That one. Yeah. That was, oh, that was the first time. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, that was horrible. It's not a good time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Izzy, what do you have for your photo? Oh, golly. Okay, so my one of my favorite moments was actually I loved the rides to and from our build site. I mean, it's not the build oh itself, goodness. but it was on the ride. We were sitting, sitting and standing in the back of a truck that mm -hmm. was um, had just this great over the top. I mean, it was not OSHA regulated whatsoever. <laughs> no. And the None traffic the there, there were. <laughs> it, it resembles like the Mercado in which there is chaos all the time everywhere. And that picture specifically shows um, us when we were stuck in traffic for oh 30 God, minutes semi. because there was a massive semi jam in which um, there was a semi trying to turn to the left and another one trying to go straight, and there was a truck sandwiched in between. And somehow they worked it out, but you could hear the grating of these semis just moving against Ugh. each other. It was not pretty whatsoever, but my favorite part was all the people who were staring at the little gringos oh just <laughs> chilling in the back of this big truck. And... Uh, we were able to count a lot of people who would just turn their heads, and we or didn't they would even smile start. Smile and wave. Right. We didn't start counting until what the fourth of the building day. Yeah, so that's like a week before yeah, we left. A full week. I was keeping a track of all of the people who were turning their heads and watching us. It was quite a few. Let it me was, tell you. Right. It was definitely interesting. Um, Antigua, the city that we um, lived in during our time in Guatemala, had a lot of tourists, but the city where we were building, San Lorenzo del Cuba did not um so it definitely felt kind of odd to feel a bit like out of place um i'd never really experienced that a lot of people asked to take pictures with us um especially i know izzy whitney and myself we got blondes and redheads the blondes and the redheads i i remember the first day this We're little girl <laughs> the, two <laughs> the two brunettes are just standing in the corner um i remember the first day this little girl came up to me and she just kind of stared at me and goes your hair's not black <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was going to say on the topic of the trucks I am so grateful that our truck had seats in it Yes, ours did not. <laughs> hey, no, well, I sat down. There were seats in the back. There were seats in the back, but there was only enough for three people. So then the rest of us had to stand, hold on, and hey, pray we that asked, we guys could have sat on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I would have sat on the floor. I'm sorry, I'm not standing. I, I went to switch with, with you, and you're like, no, I'm good. I was scared I was, like, <laughs> I was gonna fall. I I was I would only sit on the back so I wouldn't fall out. And then our builder Gregorio. You guys remember how he sat uh -huh. One on the leg edge of the over the, over the truck? Scared me to death. Yeah. Is he remember when my phone fell out of the back of the truck <gasps> onto the cobblestone in Antigua? Oh, yeah. That just goes that to show rough. how nice Guatemalans are. It was crazy because her phone did. It slipped through the cracks of the truck, fell out, and this woman who was behind us on one of her little like mopeds, mopeds, 
she held it up and was sh- waving it violently in the air. Chased us down and, and gave drove it to up me. behind us and gave it back. And we're like, "How? This is so you really nice lucked of you. out there. We no, really I did. did oh luck my out. goodness! What picture do you have to show us, Whitney? Oh, well, hold on. <laughs> I'm not ready. It's a cat photo, actually. A cat photo. So um, on one of the weekends. <laughs> We went to Indian Nose in San Juan La Laguna. Did I, I say like that right? Yep. Oh, thank yeah. God. Okay. On Lake Atitlan. So we went there, and we had to wake up at 3.30 in the morning <laughs> to go hiking at like 4.15, 4.30 in the morning so we could hike up 45 minutes, more like an hour because I slowed everyone down. So You're like, welcome. It's okay. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and once we got to the top, um, the goal was to watch the sunrise over the volcanoes, and it was absolutely amazing. The trip up there was absolutely miserable. I'm for so me. proud of you for making it up. Oh, yeah. that was especially bad. with asthma. That it was... that definitely takes special kind of person. And just a comment to all our listeners, so you really appreciate your Kirkwood team. We all made it up. Can't say the same for Mount Mercy. Can't say the same for Mount Mercy. <laughs> just saying. But yeah, but once we got to the top, watched the sun come up. We had some coffee. It was absolutely amazing. And then I looked over, and there was a baby kitten. And I'm just saying that I'm, as you all know, I'm a cat person. Um, so I kind of lost my mind a little bit and I was probably over there. I was so jealous when this lady, um, the person who had the cat, she gave the cat to Izzy first and my brain was like, I don't even think she likes cats that much. Why didn't I get the cat first? (laughs) But anyway, I got a cute little picture of me and Izzy holding a cat. I really want to know what inspired her to bring a kitten all the way up that mountain. Oh, I should find, I should send you the Simba (laughs) pictures, what I should send you is the one where they're holding her up in there. Definitely, definitely do. That's a good picture. Um, my picture, I have so many, but I think I'm going to go with this one since we didn't touch on it. Um, this was something I never thought that I'd be able to do. Um, so we ended up hiking up a volcano called Pacaya, one of several volcanoes that was in the area. And by hiked, I mean, I rented a horse, and so, <laughs> same, 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 so did I. <laughs> Keep in mind, this is one of the three active volcanoes in Guatemala. Yeah, it so, erupted last year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And d- never in my life did I ever think I'm going to be hiking up a volcano or riding up a volcano yeah. on horseback. And then we got to the top, we pulled out the marshmallows, and we got to roast marshmallows over the volcano. And it was just like, who does that? <laughs> Especially like we do. Five, five, we yeah, did. We do. We're amazing. Um, but I just, the experience was wonderful. I love talking to our tour guide. Um, you remember yeah. Wendy? Um, oh, yes. Our tour guide. Yep. I know Izzy was kind of chatting to her a little bit. And just hearing all their stories is, like, so interesting. She's been working at the Pacaya Tours since she was seven. And she was she was really lovely. She was really close to my age. I'm, I'm 20. She was 21. Um, had a son and a husband. And they just lived really, really modest lives that she didn't have a cell phone she didn't have a wedding and it's just kind of interesting it really gives you perspective because those little luxuries in the U.S. like you just kind of take them for granted even if you're someone who's like poor doesn't have a lot of money it's uncommon to not have those things here whereas in Guatemala it's more commonplace to see people without those little luxuries um, I want to open it up now to any other pictures that we have that we, we really want to share. I know I saw one on Lauren's phone that she would yeah. really like to talk about. Um, one thing that was like probably the most special moment, there was such so many amazing moments, but one super special moment is um, the Friday before we left, we went and all like pitched in our extra money and like went to the market and got groceries to take to both of the families, got to see both um build sites and the completed houses which was awesome see how they moved in yeah um so we went to the santos gomez blue team family first and when we walked in there was birthday balloons and like birthday streamers in their mind you very modest one room house that we had just built out of cinder blocks and i walked in and talked to the mom and i was like oh whose birthday and she said party party which means for you for you And I just, I was so confused. I had no idea. And Alice, the week before when we were building for them, I don't know, must have gotten on the topic with the mother of our blue team talking about when our birthdays were. 
it was, was it was like a very short conversation. It right. was just because my Spanish is so limited. So you talk about your family, you talk about school. She asked me when my birthday was, and I said, oh, it's next week. Right. And she was like, oh, and what about your amigos? What about them? And I was like, well, I don't know the rest of them. I know Lauren's is the day before mine. Mm -hmm. But it was like an offhanded comment. Right, like something that you wouldn't think. Right, would and, and it was really that. just because, like, I don't have the language capability to talk about more, like, complex right. subjects. So I didn't really think anything of it. But we walked in, and unbeknown to us, they had these streamers and Feliz balloons and two um, birthday cakes for Alice and I to celebrate our birthdays before we left. It's like, the best birthday I've this ever family had. has nothing. They have, they just got a house, yes, but, like, they don't have enough, probably, food to be, you know, satisfied for a long time or um, great shoes or great clothes. But uh, this family went out to the market and bought two birthday cakes and birthday decorations to have a little celebration for Alice and I, which I, was we, the And we met them, like, thing. four days ago. They right. gave us gifts, too. And not yeah, just for you guys, for, for everybody. Right, our whole this headband that I'm wearing yeah, just to show right. off. Just, like, it was so humbling that these people have nothing, but they're mm -hmm. still willing to be so generous and give um, give up some of the money that they do have to Just buy to things say for thank us. You. Right. Yeah. It was it was it was a really emotional day. I really I mean, emotional. you guys remember I cried my eyes out. I oh my goodness, it was. And then they sang Happy Birthday to us in Spanish. Right. right. It was so sweet. Yeah, it was it was the best day. That's gonna stick with me forever. I remember mm -hmm. when we were. I don't want to make myself cry again, but I remember um, <laughs> we were leaving and we were like giving all the kids hugs and I just, oh, it was really hitting me. And little Lester comes and gives me a big hug and goes, I'll always remember you. And I just cried. The rest of the day I cried. Yeah. It's it was just emotional for sure. Like in such a short span of time, like the impact that you have on somebody's life and the impact that they have on you. I'm never mm -hmm. going to forget them. No. Yeah. It was amazing. All right. I would have said the same thing to him if I had figured out how to say it in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does anyone else have any pictures? I know Izzy had a really interesting experience in Guatemala. <laughs> oh, yes. Please share. Please share. Oh, gosh. Okay. So when I was down there, I absolutely got firsthand experience into the healthcare, and <laughs> just how much sometimes it sucks because it was, what, the third bill day? It was it nine was the last build day. No, no I think it was sure? second to last because we came the back fourth, the next the day. Yeah. Yeah. Was the third, I and I, it was <laughs> what, 9.30 in the morning and I was ready to get to work. I was tired, but I was, mm, I, I wanted to be helpful. So I went up and I asked one of the builders, hey, what can I do? How can I be helpful? Whatever. And he's like, all right, we need to rip up all of this fishing wire. It was held, held down to lay the cement flat. Can you... Just get it out. So I was like, yeah, I totally can. So then Whitney and I began work on that. And I just want to say, we weren't there 30 minutes, okay? Yeah, we, we were just not got there, there 30 minutes. It was so, so early in the build day. It was 9 a.m. And I start ripping it up. I rip out one because these were held down by nails. And I felt something hit the back of my hand. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Where did that nail go? I have to find it. It probably fell on the ground. So I'm looking on the ground, whatever. I have gloves on, and I look down at my hand, and there's a nail sticking out of it. And oh. I was like, oh, my gosh. This is probably the worst possible thing I could have done, but this would have probably happened to me because I'm a little bit clumsy sometimes. But Just a little. <laughs> that being said, um, we were able, well, we had to call the builders back. We had to... Asked the family for some hydrogen peroxide. I got to play doctor for a little she, while. Yes. Whitney got to play doctor, and we were trying to flush out this wound, trying to get <laughs> it, trying to get all the dirt out, because there was, like, this two-centimeter line of dirt under my skin. Wasn't too fun, but... Um, Thank God one of our roommates was a medical student. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we'll, we'll definitely get to that. But we had to go tearing around the streets of San Lorenzo trying to find a doctor that would help us because Guatemalan government isn't exactly the most helpful when it comes to injuries. So we had to go to three different places. The final doctor didn't even clean out all the stuff all the way. He gave me, of course, antibiotics and pain meds, and he did clean it out some, but not all of the dirt was gone. And by the next day, my Lisa, 
our teacher. <laughs> my Lisa. My, my Lisa. Um, she was taking so a look great. at it, and she said, you need to get all that dirt out. You need to go home, try and scrub it out as best as you can, but ask your host mother for a sterilized needle. Like, I'm sure she must have some. She's crafty. So I went back, and I asked, and she gave me a needle, but she said she couldn't do it because she couldn't handle, like, the pain or whatever. So then I went and I asked Alice, I was like, Alice, will you help me? And she's like, I don't want to hurt you. I was like, I need someone to do this. <laughs> anyway, so one of the interns at the organization, bless his heart, his name is James, and he sat down with me, took the needle, and I chomped down on a towel while he dug the rest of and the dirt out. And we had a out. makeshift surgery. It was a little makeshift si surgery, and this was the photo from it. This is not meant to scare anybody and off, yes, by the way. Yes, please don't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it did not derail the, the experience day. too much. <laughs> yeah, she was fine. She was site. fine. It was just, just ready a story. To go. Didn't, no, didn't she start the same day? Yeah, you, yeah, you, you came back to work. You came back. We, I was... Between the time like 11. I got injured, and by the time I got back, it was a span of two hours. Yep. And I was back, and within the first five minutes, I think I have a picture of it, but I was nailing more, I was hammering more nails. Oh, I have a good picture of you. That doesn't it was testify to <laughs> Izzy's determination <laughs> and yes. grit she had on the work site. I don't know what does. I was so ready to Izzy's begin work proved again. proved her grit. But, yeah. I see, Whitney, you have a picture pulled up. I do. I do have a picture. So this is a picture of Agua Volcano. Uh -huh. Volcan de Agua. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just to be more technical. Um, <laughs> so this is actually at our host family, um, Dina's house. Dina was amazing. So she took care of us the entire time we were there. It was me, Lauren, and Luana. Plus three other students Plus from another program. three other students from Indiana who oh, were yeah. just there to learn Spanish, Six which of two of them were fluent. So just, <laughs> yeah. I think they were just there for fun. <laughs> but um, every morning when we woke up, we would go out onto like the outside patio, balcony, whatever you want to call it. And you would look up and there would be the volcano just mm -hmm. looking at you and it's always beautiful. so beautiful Amazing. gorgeous we had the best view for we sure. we had the best <laughs> view for sure just coming from iowa like to have that be like your oh absolutely view. why do i live in iowa when i could live in guatemala <laughs> yeah, my normal volcano. view from my window is my next right. door's my next door neighbor's just yard i remember i would tell the kids at the work site they would ask about iowa and i'd be like well no eye volcanoes <laughs> and they would be like Wow. It's just flat. It's just, yeah. You just, just stand on a bucket you could see for 100 miles. There you go. Welcome to Iowa. Right. It's definitely it's just interesting funny to be like on the is. roads and you're, you know, going up and down on the roads normally. And then over here, it's just I know. straight for miles. I One thing I loved about Agua, I love that we found out on one of our last days that there's actually a coffee farm at the base of Agua that we got to explore mm -hmm. and harvest coffee beans from and then have the best cup of coffee I have ever had. Do Sorry, all... Lauren. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> we got some take home through you guys. Yeah. Oh, did you ever try uh, yeah. that coffee that we? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, see, it's so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but on the subject of Dina's, she had a pila, which is one of those oh. little washboards. Um, they have these little washboards in Guatemala. I mean, they have public ones, but um, this picture was from. Do you the, have it? Yes. yes, I do have it. It was from one of the days when I needed to wash some of my clothes, but I didn't have enough for a full load. So I just called up, um, what, these girls, and I was like, hey, can I come over and wash my clothes? So I picked up all of the stuff that I needed, and I marched my way over to Dina's, and we had this little Pila washing party. Yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> and Class and then party. You're so yeah. good, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely. You have true skill. It was... It's the Amish in me, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> but we were able to wash all of our clothes and then hang them up to dry. And it was just such a wonderful experience. It was humbling, for sure, because I don't usually wash my clothes by hand. But, yeah, really fun. Luana, do you have any last pictures you'd like to show? Uh, I was going to talk about the pillow, so <laughs> I, think I think we're good. Covered. <laughs> yeah. I guess I just have one last one to show before we sign off. This was from our last day. Um, this was zip lining. Um, it, it was amazing. Uh, we actually got to do something kind of unique called the Superman zip line. Now, I will say this was my first time zip lining, and I was scared to death in general. But to kind of sum up what a Superman zip line is, they take the front half of your body and they attach it to a bar, and then they pull you up by your feet and attach you to the other side of the bar. So you're like you're in like a belly flop position, and then you have to hold your arms out. 
as they send you soaring, like... 600 meters across the canopy. Yeah. yeah. How, how, many, how high up were we? Oh, oh, gosh, thousands of feet. High enough where the ground looked teeny tiny. Yeah. <laughs> Did you look at your shadow beneath you? Kind of, yeah. It was so yeah. cool. Are the birds flying yeah, below yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Then, and then the brace yourself for impact. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. It, was, it was incredible. Um, I think we have an amazing video of Kristen, um, another one of our faculty members who went down that zip line. It's just all those experiences were just so incredible, things I never thought I'd be able to experience. So just to wrap up, um, I know we touched briefly on our prior travel experiences. Would you guys say that this trip like differed from your experiences in the past? Was it like something completely unique? Oh, absolutely it was. We, we crammed every single possible thing that we could have done in the span of two weeks, whether it was, I mean, even on our days off, like we went to the Mercado and then we went and visited the families and we were doing stuff every single day, every single night. You had the option to stay in if you needed to. I mean, believe Which me, I did. it yes. was, yeah. Yeah. Too. It, it can be really exhausting at times, but I every slept single for like night, a day when we got home. <laughs> it was spa days. It, it was, was amazing. going out. It was seen bakeries, restaurants, cafes. I mean, we were just, uh, I memorized some of the streets so that I could be able to walk down mm -hmm. to the artisan market and back without getting lost. It was awesome. And it was physically intense because you're working on the build site and then you're doing <laughs> the hikes. But um, for me, I was, I was nervous about that. I am not exactly the most in shape person I know. But I, I don't think, think anyone of yeah one I don't of us like are, are any of us athletes people at yeah, all. Exactly. So we're good. <laughs> but like we all pulled through, yeah. and I just think it was like really amazing um, how we proved like we proved ourselves like both physically and like mentally with the Spanish. We all pulled through. I mean, I'm not saying any of us are fluent in Spanish by any means, but we did a good job with like, hola, hola, <laughs> hola <laughs> <Whitney>. yes, cómo estás. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would you guys say to anyone who's considering? either doing a study abroad through Kirkwood or another another university or program, or even just traveling in general, immersing themselves in another culture. Do it. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think you'll learn a lot about yourself yeah. and those around you. And it's just really big growing experience. And I mean, if you're going to do it, you might as well go to Guatemala and build a couple houses while you're at it. Right. Saying. Do something good. Put some good back into the world. Yeah, I agree. I think this really like helped me learn a lot about another culture but also learn about myself and Kirkwood made it so easy like yeah. for Kirkwood to have the opportunity to go to Guatemala and Belize and I know they have other programs but like now's the time to do it you're oh, yeah. in school there's so many scholarships that are available not the only financials that. they were not that bad I know everyone says oh it's not that bad it looks intimidating when it you does. just look at the price of the trip it's like oh my god I'll never be able to do that but there are scholarships available if you just ask if you look into them our study abroad coordinator here Hiromi fabulous she is so good about encouraging you and showing you all the financial aid that's available to you in the end like it really didn't hurt me too much financially, and just the the benefit that I gained from it just outweighs what I did spend. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's a life changing opportunity, no doubt. And just for us to be able to go, and I think I can say for all of us again, like we would go back tomorrow. If oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Build another house. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so so much for joining me today. Um, I know that this experience really really touched your guys' life, and I just want to say thank you to all of you for touching another family's life as well um yeah i i know kirkwood is really grateful to you guys for uh taking advantage of this opportunity and honestly we really want to encourage other people to take advantage of this opportunity so that kirkwood can continue to make this happen because we're a really small group this trip almost didn't happen and if we want it to keep going then we really need more brave people like maybe some people listening to take advantage of the study abroad opportunities out there so that they can continue. Thanks for setting this up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was amazing. Of thank course, you. guys. All right, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Adios. Bye. Adios. <laughs> Hasta luego. <laughs>